Welcome. I'm going to have a little standing practice. Looks like our tree has grown ever deeper roots. And some birds landed in the bountiful canopy. It's really wonderful. Welcome, Bobs. <coughs> so, step out. And pink is into the center line. Elbows down, wrists up, wrists down, fingertips up. Pinkies out, thumbs in, elbows rise, then elbows fall, wrists rise, wrists fall, fingertips rise. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to just come right into standing tonight. Good job, everybody's stayed standing, recognizing a grander nature than your first thought of yourself. Standing upright. A little Zen Song practice here. I'm going to hold a, a different uh, position here in a moment. Just going to shift to the left leg, pivot on the ball of the right foot. So the right heel floats, but the left knee is still over the ball of the foot. And I'm facing maybe 30 or 45 degrees, but otherwise holding the same posture. Single, you know, I'm, I'm all but empty here. Maybe when we turn back, we'll read some poetry by Shenzhen. That's David Nelson. I'm feeling rather in a simple mood. I was kind of feeling like I was missing the single leg practice today. Make sure that the turn has been without the knee, the hips, <coughs> the shoulders, the nose, the center line are all facing this angle that I've picked here. In other words, my hips haven't been left behind and my head is over twisted. Everything's square to this direction. Keep my torso rotated as a unit. Breathing slowly, deeply, quietly, knees pulling, gently, completely.
pivot on the foot again and come down into a largely round from wrist through shoulder to other shoulder to elbow to wrist is round but then the palms are flat so thumbs fall the four fingers pointing to one another so that the elbows are in front of the body in this plane Generally, when I face these directions, we'll do the other sides in a moment. I'll come into uh, centered and hang out here a bit. Rather than just transition from side to side, I'll rest in the center, if not the full Giram experience. Oh. Remembering how we trained last summer. I like this line. Of course, I'm breathing an awful lot into shins and stuff here, but that's the fun of this fertilizing my practice with poetry. He's not remembering who he trained with necessarily, although he says we, maybe he knows the subjects. He's not saying here's what we trained, we did this technique or that technique, or when, as in the time of day or night, or duration, although he does say last summer, but it's the how, you know, and the how seems to me is really a story of the internal, the intention, the will, the attitude, the devotion, the spirit um, that comes to pilot the body in your practice. He says, remembering how we trained last summer, you know, last summer is um, Yeah, it's the summer, so it's generally very physically demanding. It's hot and sweaty and um, enervating. And last summer suggests that you're at your oldest at that point. It wasn't 10 summers ago. So however old you are, this is your oldest that your body has been at this uh, height of physical challenge. And he's remembering how we trained last summer. What was the intention? What was the spirit? What was the verve? What was the will? And of course, more than likely, David's just describing that summer practice he recalls. And you'll see why he mentions summer in the next line. Remembering how we trained last summer. Same kind of practice that we did here, just burying it. So those fingers pretty well face one another, rounded shape, but for the relatively level palm to palm. That should put my thumbs more or less forward. And of course, you know, if he's practicing at this moment, remembering how they trained last summer is 
probably some failure of this practice right? out of the moment with the mind. If he's preparing to practice just now, you're remembering one of the more difficult practices when you were at your oldest and the conditions were at their hardest. That could be a really powerful entree into your current practice. And perhaps he's just having strong coffee and burnt toast. That's the name of the book from which these come. And perhaps he's just not practicing, not about to practice. He's just remembering a practice and that'd be fine too. Maybe deriving some spiritual sustenance from that memory as he gnaws on the toast and inhales the coffee's aroma. I'm going to transition here as we've done each side. Remembering how we trained last summer, how fragrant our geese smelled. A gi is the uh, uniform one would wear in a Japanese martial art. How fragrant our geese smelled. And of course, if you have your mind in the martial artist training and training in the height of summer and certainly somewhere like David who's been training for a long time and trains very passionately and devotedly we can imagine the smell of those geese the kind of thing that you take home but you leave on the front porch until you do laundry or you toss in the fire pit, or certainly hold your nose up and hold the gi at arm's length as you race to uh, laundry machines. Or maybe the riverside and rock would be more in keeping. Remembering how we trained last summer, how fragrant our gi smelled. So that's the whole poem, pretty simple idea, right? Just thinking back to a training practice in the summertime and the ripening smell of the sweat, you know, soaking into the cotton, uh, you know, long sleeved, uh, you know, pants, not shorts, long sleeves, maybe even with a hakama over that. Uh, and exercising. So probably none of us would choose the word fragrant, right? <laughs> We'd have much richer, you know, acrid umami and, you know, nasal assault. We'd have much more um, negative uh, words born of negative associations you know and he says fragrant you know <coughs> like a zen poet would write of the cherry blossoms the chrysanthemums the lilacs now why does he say fragrant well i'd say for one and we're suggesting here obviously it might be, this is just part of my practice to consider what it might mean, not actually determine what it does mean. And what it might mean is what it does mean to me now for my practice. So it might mean that somebody is recognizing that they are not enlightened. They're still judging, they're still naming and uh, discerning, um, applying adjectives but he's calling it fragrant rather than foul smelling, right? And so maybe that suggests some growth, right? Still not enlightened, but definitely beginning to see the world in a different way. And maybe that's something 
I can find in my practice. I haven't figured this posture out yet. I'm not enlightened. I don't have all the answers, but maybe in my practice, maybe in my summertime practice, maybe in my later years summertime practice, maybe I practice, you know, within a shroud of what is easy to name. Um, bad, hurtful, harmful, disgusting, and so forth. <clears throat> and so I could read this as if the key is my body, right? I'm doing this inner practice, like we said, how might suggest the, the inner, the uh, indistinct, insubstantive elements of a practice. And maybe my practice is all inside in this but the outer is my body, the shell, right? the vestments. And maybe that's like the ghee, the thing that's all too easy to apply negative terminology to, to, to think of it negatively, to be troubled by or disgusted by, to want to separate myself from, <clears throat> you know, like the smelly ghee. It's interesting that, you know, if we say um, smelly, you know, the words don't imply good or bad. And yet we hear smelly and we think of it as yum. Uh, you know, uh, we're, uh, sorry, we think of it as eh. If we hear fragrant, we think yum. And maybe he's suggesting that doesn't matter what you call it. It's just a smell. Your naming, it doesn't change what it is. How fragrant our geese smell. Remembering how we trained last summer, how fragrant our geese smelled. So I would come back to Zanshuang and then change generally. So even if my centered posture was here, come back to Zanshuang and then change that seems Nice to me, like come back to a starting place, clean the cutting board, and then begin to cook, wash the dishes, and pour the coffee. Strong coffee, burnt toast. So one more time, remembering how we trained last summer. How fragrant our geese smelled. And to me, I just... I hear a smile as the last bit of punctuation in that. And there's just a, you know, an end quote. But that's what I hear. Uh, maybe that's me referencing my own practices that sound like what I'm envisioning through these words. And maybe David's just idly remembering smelly geese after a challenging practice. It could be that simple. Okay, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Bring the energy into the upper saddle. Bring the energy into the heart space. Settle. Bring the energy into the lower center. And towards the future. Towards the present. And lastly, towards the past. Thank you. Thank you all.
very much. Thank you, Tree.